Welcome back to my Roblox beginner scripting tutorial series. My name is Braldev, and in this episode, we'll be discussing about find first child and wait for child, which are two functions that Roblox has provided to us that's going to be very useful in locating objects within our game. And it's also useful to help us understand the structure of how a game is structured. So to recap, a game is basically comprised of all of these different folders that have its own specific use cases. Like let's say this workspace it shows all of the parts that we can see within this 3D world that basically make up the workspace of the game. Now, when we're understanding this hierarchy, like if we open up this workspace, this workspace has all of these different objects that are within this workspace folder. The workspace in this case is called a parent, and everything that's inside of this workspace is a child that belongs to the workspace parent. And we can continue going down this list by finding more objects that have stuff contained within them, like this base plate. So this base plate has a texture child, and this base plate is the parent of this texture child. And this base plate <laughs> is the child of this workspace parent. And so you can kind of understand the structure from here on out, with how the parent and child structure works inside of the Explorer. So with that understanding, now let me show you some things that can help us organize these parts before we start using these functions. So there's two ways we can organize stuff within our game. Uh, one of them is being models, and the second one is being folders. And I'm gonna show you what both of them do. So if we go inside of the Explorer and we click on the plus sign next to workspace and we insert a model like this, so I'm gonna click on model, uh, it's going to add a model inside of the workspace. Now, basically what a model does is it groups parts together to make up one big part as a whole that's basically a model. So if we go into the model tab and we click on parts, so we insert a part here, I'm going to go to the right side and I'm going to rename this part to part one. And what I'm going to do is drag this into the model that we just created. And now I'm going to duplicate this part. So I'm gonna hit Control D and I'm going to select the move tool like so, and I'm going to move it this way. And I'm going to rename this part to part two, and I'm going to duplicate it one more time, and I'm going to move it this way and call this one part three. Now, since all of these are contained within a model, if we hover over one of these parts, then it's going to select all three of the parts because it's all contained inside of one model. So if I select one of these parts, then it's going to select the model rather than the individual part itself. And we can drag this model around and it's going to drag all three parts along with it because it's all contained inside of one model. Now, let me show you what a folder does. So if we click on the plus sign and insert a folder like this, and let's say we take all three of these parts. I'm going to select the first part and I'm gonna hit control while selecting the other two parts like this and I'm going to drag it inside of the folder. So within this folder, we can still select the folder and drag it around like so, but if we go into the game and we select one of these parts, then it's going to individually select one of these parts, or at least when we hover over it, to then move it around if we want to do so, just like this. So that's like a slight difference between a folder and a model. But generally what I would say is you should use a model if you want to group parts together to make up one big part. But a folder can be more generalized and can be used to organize parts, scripts, and other sorts of assets you can use inside of your game. So that's like a short introduction to models and folders. But why is this important? Well, this is going to be important to understand the parent and child relationship when we're using these two functions inside of our game. So what I'm going to do is select these parts again, and I'm gonna move it back into our model, and I'm going to delete this folder. So the first function I'm going to show you is find first child. And what we're actually going to do is insert a script, not inside of the workspace, but let's insert a script inside of the model that we just created. So I'm going to hit the plus sign next to model and I'm going to insert a script. Okay, and I'm going to delete this code that's inside of here. And now what we're going to do is first locate our model. But what's interesting about this is because we have our script inside of the model, we actually don't need to locate the model from the game data model and then into the workspace and then into the model itself. So what we would have done is we would have said uh, local and then the name of the model, which we can just call model like this. We're gonna set this equal to game.workspace.model. We don't need to do it like this, but instead we can do it from the script itself. So if we were to actually delete this, we start at where the script is located. So in all lowercase, we're just going to say script, which basically tells us that we are currently located inside of the script right now. 
and we want to get the parent of this script, which is going to be the model. So we can just say script.parent, and this is going to locate the model rather than doing game.workspace.model just like this. Both of these basically do the exact same thing because we put the script inside of the model as a child. So now that we've come to that understanding, let's locate, let's say the first part here. So what we're going to do is drop a line and then we're going to say local part one equals model dot part one. So this is how we've been able to locate parts or other objects within the game. It's basically by using a dot and then whatever the name of the object is. But now this is where the first function comes in, which is find first child. And let me show you what this looks like. So instead of saying dot part one, we're actually going to delete this and we're going to replace this with colon find first child open and close parentheses. And inside of these parentheses, we're going to put the name of the part that we're trying to look for. So in quotations, we're going to say part one. Now, why are we doing it like this instead of doing dot part one like we've been doing in the past? Well, let's say in this case, we have a script that's trying to look for a part that's contained within this model. Let's say this part is not here. So if we were to just delete this part and it's just gone from the model, then the script is going to try to look for a part called part one that's in the model. But part one is not here. So the script is going to throw in an error saying that there is no such thing called part one if we were to just locate part one inside of the model. But what this function does with find first child is it's going to check the model for a part one. And if there's no part one, then it's just going to tell us that and we can handle the error if that ever comes to be the case. So what I'm going to do is hit control Z as in zebra so we can bring the part back. And I'm going to go back to the script. And what we're going to do down here is check if part one actually does exist. So we're going to say if part one, then we're going to, let's say, do something with this part, like change the brick color of it. So we're just going to say part one dot brick color equals brick color dot new open and close parentheses. And inside of these quotations, we can pick a random color here. I'm just going to say um, Coco and then we can hit enter like that. So if we go into the game and hit test and hit play, then what we should see inside of the game is part one has changed its color because the script was able to find part one within the model. Now, once again, this is just a safety precaution to let us know that if the script decides to not find the first part, then it's just going to skip this if statement and it's just going to continue with the script as is without throwing an error inside of the output. I hope that part has made sense to you. So if we hit stop and we basically delete the first part and if we go into the game now, then it's not going to throw in an error, but it's also not going to change the part of part one because obviously there's no part one inside of the model. So it's a safety precaution to be able to look for something if it doesn't exist because there's a chance that it won't exist. And that is the purpose of find first child. And I hope that this has made sense to you. So now what I'm going to do is hit stop and I'm going to hit control Z again to bring the part back. And now let me introduce to you the second function that's going to be useful and that's called wait for child. Now basically what this does is it lets Roblox wait to look for a specific object within a game for a specific period of time. And if it doesn't look for it, then it's just going to skip it and it's going to continue the rest of the code if it did not look for it. And we can handle the script accordingly to whether Roblox was able to find it or not. So what this is going to look like is let's say we drop two lines and we were to look for part two. So we're going to say local part two equals model colon wait for child just like this open and close parentheses and we're going to specify part two inside of here now basically what's going to happen is roblox is going to run the script and it's going to look for if part two exists within this model which in this case it actually does exist once we join into the game so once we do that then we're just going to let's say make a print statement saying part two has been detected just like this so if we go into the game and hit play then what we should see in the output is immediately it says part two has been detected because it's contained within the model that we created. But let's hit stop and let me show you what happens if we delete the part and then bring it in after a certain period of time. So what I'm going to do is take this part and I'm going to right click and hit cut so that it's contained within our clipboard. And what I'm actually going to do is go to test and click this drop down and hit on run so that all we're going to see is our camera. So once we see this, 
then it's going to say in the output after a certain period of time that it says that there's a warning that says infinite yield possible on waiting for part two because Roblox took a while to try and see if part two existed, but in this case, it actually didn't. So if we go into the workspace and we go into the model, so I'm going to right click the model and I'm going to hit paste into just like this. And now it's going to say that part two has been detected because we used the wait for child function to see whether the part was actually going to be detected. And since it was added to this model, that's when we decided to continue executing the script because of it. And it's very useful for situations like this if we're trying to wait for something to be added into a model or into the game itself. So that is basically how we use wait for child and also how we use find first child inside of our game. If something in this video didn't make sense to you, then I encourage you to rewatch some of the bits before we move on to the final part of this video, which is going to be a practical example of using find first child. So now what I'm going to do is hit stop and I'm also going to hit control Z to bring part two back. So for this last part of the video, we're going to be making what's called a kill brick. And basically what this does is if let's say our player was in the game and we decided to step on this part, the part would kill us and it would basically reset our character. Um, kind of like if we were to play an obstacle course and if we touch a part that we shouldn't be touching, then it basically kills our character and that's what's called a kill brick. And we can use what we learned in the last episode with, uh, with the touched event and also combining it with find first child to make a kill brick. So that's what I'm going to be showing you how to do for the rest of this video. So what I'm going to do is go to the model and we're going to insert a part like this and we can change the brick color of this to red so that we can uh, say that this is a kill brick. And we're going to go to the right side and we're going to rename this part to kill brick and then we're going to hit enter. So what I'm going to do is insert a script inside of the kill brick. So I'm going to hit the plus sign and I'm going to insert a script just like this. I'm going to delete this code and we're first going to make reference to the kill brick, which once again, we can do from the script that's inside of this kill brick. So we can say local kill brick equals script. So we're located inside of the script and then we're going to say dot parent just like this. And now we're going to use a touched event for this kill brick. So we're going to say kill brick dot touched colon connect function open and close parentheses. And then we're going to specify the other part that's inside of here. And then we're going to hit enter just like this. So what we need to do in order to detect if this is a player that's touching this kill brick is we need to find what's called a humanoid. So I'm just going to demonstrate to you what this humanoid is really quickly by going to test and we're going to hit the drop down and then we're going to hit play. So if we go into the game and go to the workspace and go to our character, which is our brawled of character or whatever character your name is inside of the game, we're going to open this up and we're going to see that there is an object here called humanoid. And this humanoid is basically used to tell us that this is a player that's stepping on this part rather than just another random part stepping on this. So we're going to be detecting this using find first child. So what we're going to do is hit stop and we're going to go back to our script that we created. So we're going to locate the humanoid of this part. So we're going to say local other part equals. Oh, and there's one more thing I forgot to mention too, is that so if we're inside of the game and we're stepping on this part, let's say, most likely we're using our right foot or our left foot to be stepping on this part. And as you can see with the part that's touching this kill brick part, we can locate the humanoid that is basically contained within our brawl battle um, character. So the way we can do this is we can actually go to our script if we hit stop and we go to our script like this, we can find the humanoid using the other part uh, by saying local humanoid equals other part dot parent colon find first child open and close parentheses and we're going to say humanoid just like this so basically when we have our other part which is going to be like our right foot or our left foot we're going to get the parent of that which is going to be our character data model and then from there we're going to find um a humanoid inside of that player data model so then once we make this check we're going to say if humanoid, then we're going to set the health of the humanoid equal to zero to essentially kill the player. So this is a property of humanoid, which we're basically just going to say humanoid dot health equals zero. So health is a property of humanoid for the character. And if we set it equal to zero, then that's going to kill the player. So now if we go into the game and hit play, so our character should be in inside of the game. And if we touch this part, then it's going to kill our player like so. 
So that is basically how we make a kill brick, and we can also make sure that a character is touching this kill brick and not any other random part inside of the game. So that is basically how we use Find First Child and Wait for Child inside of our game, and I encourage you to experiment with Find First Child and Wait for Child for any other parts or any other functionality that you may think of for this challenge. So for today's learning objective, I want you to continue experimenting with that. And once you do do that, I want you to go down to the comment section and paste in your code for other people to, to see that you are comfortable sharing. And that is basically going to be it for this episode. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you in the next one. Take care.